Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to discuss the variables in robot framework. We're going to cover the following topics. What are variables in robot framework? What are the different types of variables in robot framework? How do we create these variables? And lastly, we'll see that how do we refer to those variables. So let's start by first defining what are variables. Variables are elements used to store values that can be referenced by other elements. In robot framework, variables are case sensitive. It is recommended to use capital letters with global variables. For example, I can consider a variable with the name var1 and I can give the value to the variable as my name. So a new variable has been created over here by the name var1 and I can use other elements to refer to this variable. Now, in robot framework, basically there are three types of variables, scalar variable, list variable, and dictionary variable. So let's start by understanding what are the scalar variables. So the most common way to use variables in robot framework test data is by using the scalar variable. And the syntax for the scalar variables is that we have a dollar sign and in the curly braces we have the variable name. When this syntax is used, the variable name is replaced with its value as it is. Most of the variable values are strings, but variables can contain objects, also including numbers, list, dictionaries, and sometimes even custom objects. So over here, if you have to create a new scalar variable, I'm going to do dollar sign my variable name var1, and I can give a name over here, Bharat. So here, this is a new variable created, which is a scalar variable. Now let's actually create one scalar variable in robot framework and use it in one of our test cases, which we created in previous video. So I'm going to open my write editor over here, write.py. So my write editor has been opened now. Over here, I'm going to go to my test suite, test suite 01, which we created and we created a test case TC01. In the last video, we used a keyword from the robot framework should be equal. This is an inbuilt keyword which we use from the library and in here we compare two values now let's actually create two scalar variables and use those variable instead of these values now to create the scalar variables i'm going to right click on test suite and i'm going to do new scalar so the first variable i'm creating let's name it give it as name var1 you can give any name you want and on the value which i'm giving to here is four so you can also provide a comment over here. So I can just write this as my first scalar variable. And I'm going to click OK. So over here, you can see that we created our first scalar variable. I'm going to create another scalar variable. I'm going to right click and do new scalar. So you can give a name over here, var2. I'm going to give a value to this scalar variable as let's give an, uh, the same value for because we want to compare the two variables. I can give a comment. It's it's not necessary to provide the comment, but it's good that you write the comments with your variables. This is my second variable. I'm going to click OK. Now let's actually go back to our test case and use those variables over here. So as you can see, if we go to the our keyword should be equal. Now instead of these values, we can use these keywords. And I've already told you the syntax for using the scalar variable. We're going to use dollar sign and the name of the variable. I'm going to use the same name of the variable var1. And over here, I'm going to use the second variable, curly braces, var2. So over here, we have two variables, the same two variables. And now I'm going to run the same test case. So I'm going to save the test case over here. And I'm going to go to run and select this test case and I'm going to click on start. So it says you want to save unsafe modifications. I'm going to click yes. So here it says that the our test case have been passed. If we go to the log over here, I can open the log for this test case. It's, I'm going to drill down to the test keyword. It says this keyword should be equal. The documentation was fails if the given objects are unequal. We have compared these two variables and since these two variables contains the same value, the test case have been passed. Now let's actually understand the second type of variable in robot framework, which is the list variable. So 
when a variable is used as a scalar for example we use just a variable right now its values is to be used as is if a variable value is a list or a list like it is also possible to use it as a list variable and for a list variable we have the add symbol with the variable name inside for the list variables individual list items are passed in the argument separately for example we have a user list variable which has two values bharat also another value robot framework so for these types of variable we consider it as a list variable so the values inside the list variable are defined as index values so over here bharat will be the index value 0 robot framework will be the index value 1 and to use the syntax over in the robot framework we have the symbol at with the variable name and in the square brackets we have the index values so let's actually go back to our robot framework and create a new test case in which we will understand list variables more so i'm going to go back to my write editor for understanding the list variable i'm going to create a new test case so i'm going to right click on my test suite a new test case i'm going to give the name tc02 over here i'm going to create another keyword we're going to use the inbuilt keyword from robot framework so let's actually see one of the inbuilt keyword so i'm going to write should be i'm going to press control alt and space it says it provides a list of uh, the keywords by the inbuilt uh, library so i'm going to use this keyword should not be equal as string it has arguments first and second it says if fails if objects are equal after converting them to strings so i'm going to use this keyword now it's requiring two arguments to compare them and if they are not equal it's going to be passed because it says should not be equal as strings so over here i'm going to right click on test suite i'm going to create now this time new list variable so over here i'm going to give the name of my list variable let's give the name user you can give any name as you want but i'm going to give the name over here user so here it says what are the values you want to provide to this list variable so let's give the first value as bharat let's give the second value as robot framework so over here you can see that i in the one list variable i have two values as two index values but both of these strings are different so i'm going to click okay here so over here i have created a new list variable and you can see over here it has a add symbol preceding to it and the scalar variable had a dollar symbol preceding to it so i'm going to go back to my test case now here i'm going to use this list variable so i'm going to type at i'm going to do the curly braces i'm going to type user i just sorry i just going to create the more space over here okay this is good over here i'm going to close this i'm going to use this square brackets to write my first index so this is my first index for my variable so i'm going to use the same variable i'm just going to copy this and paste it over here so over here but in this time i'm going to use the index as 1 so over here it says that these two should not be equal as strings so we have our list variable with the zeroth index and our list the same list variable with the first index so actually let's go back to run and actually run this test case so i'm going to select this test case this time i'm going to click on start i'm going to save it as you can see over here our test case has been passed let's go to the log and see the results so over here i'm going to drill down to my keyword so this says the keyword says should not be equal as strings it it would have been failed if the objects are equal after converting them to strings but in our case both the objects were different it was not equal as strings thus the test case have been passed now let's try to understand the last type of variable in the word framework which is the dictionary variable so dictionary variables so as we discuss above a variable containing a list can be used as a list variable to pass items to pass the list items to a keyword as individual arguments similarly a variable containing a dictionary like object can be used as a dictionary variable for example we use an ampersand sign and a variable name to declare a dictionary variable in actual practice this means the individual items 
list items of the dictionary are passed as named arguments to this keyword. So basically in the dictionary variable, we store them as key value pairs. So we have a name of a dictionary variable, for example, user. We have a key over here by the name name and we have the value Bharat associated to it. We have the key over name topic. We have the value robot framework. Now let's actually go back to the robot framework and understand dictionary variables in more detail. So I'm going to go back to my write editor. Here I'm going to create a new test case for explaining your dictionary variable. So I'm going to click right on test with a new test case TC03. And over here to explain about the dictionary variables, I'm going to use again the inbuilt keyword from one of the libraries for robot framework. I'm just going to expand this so that we have more space. So I'm going to write should be, I'm going to press control all space. Here, this time we're going to use should be equal as strings. The last time for test case number two, over here, we use should not be equal as strings. Over here, I'm going to use should be equal as strings. So over here, let's actually create the new dictionary variable. So I'm going to right click and click new dictionary variable. As you can see, it already gives us the syntax and symbol. And then we have to write the name of our dictionary variable. So here I'm going to give the name Let's give the name credentials and give the values. So let's give the key value pairs. So let's give the key username equals to Bharat. Let's give another password. Equals to Bharat. We have column ones. So it says individual items must be in the format key equal to value and we have followed that format and given in username equal to Bharat and password equal to Bharat. I'm going to click OK. So here we have created our dictionary variable by the name credentials. I'm going to go back to my test case TC03. I'm going to use the variable over here. So my variable is an symbol curly braces credentials And now here, I'm going to give the key value to this uh, dictionary variable. So I'm going to open the square brackets and give username. I just have to check over here. The username was with capital or with small. So it's with small. I'm going to use the same keyword. I'm going to paste it here. Now this time, instead of username, I'm going to give password. So here, we have our dictionary variable with one of the key username and one of the key password. I'm, I'm going to use the keyword should be equal as strings over here. So here, let's actually select this test case and click on run. So I'm going to run this test case now. It says that the test case have passed. Let's actually look at the log for this test case. I'm going to drill down to the keyword. So here it says that should be equal as strings. We have our two keys for the same dictionary variable credentials. We have the username and the password. It compared the two strings. It says the documentation, it would have been failed if the objects are unequal after converting them to strings. But in this case, our objects were equal after converting them to strings. So the test case are passed. So in this video, we actually covered three types of variables. Our list variable, dictionary variable, and the scalar variable. We're going to have more implementation about these variables when we jump into the web-based automation. We're going to understand the real implementation of these variables. Thank you for watching this video, and I'm going to see you in the next video.